Hey, this is Mad Movie Mark and the Mad Movie Mark Movie Review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 2020 Nigerian drama I, Mofi, or as it was released in the United States. This is my desire. I should be going. Hey, why are you leaving so fast? What's the hurry? I haven't even started my review yet. Stick around. Let's see, let's see how this thing goes. I, Mofi is split into two parts. One is called Spain and one is called Italy. There's an epilogue at the end too, but basically Spain and Italy. It revolves around two characters, one male named Mofi, one female named Rosa, and they're both trying to leave the village that they're in and search for a better life. One of them in Spain, one of them in Italy. Now along the way, they suffer just the biggest hardships that you would ever f face in your life. They live a tough tough life in Nigeria. It is so sad. It is so depressing. Um, it's a slow burn of a movie, but like the emotions that they're going through and the hardships that they're going through, you like feel it. You feel like it's, you feel it in your soul. You feel like you are going through those emotions with them. And it is just, it is soul crushing. It is heartbreaking. It is really hard to watch, but it is a phenomenal, fantastic movie. Acted beautifully by both characters, uh, directed beautifully. Cinematography is amazing, but it's just a story that they're telling here and how they tell it is just absolutely phenomenal. So we start with Mofi, who is a printing shop technician. Um, now he is trying to have him and his family move to Spain and he's trying to get the, the paperwork ready so that they can do this. Now it is just so much money to get their, their, uh, green cards and their paperwork and everything they need to be able, it's, it's probably not a green card, but to get everything they need to move to Spain, it is just uh, an insurmountable amount of money that I don't see how anyone could ever pay, um, like legally or easily, uh, in order to become citizens, in order to become, to, to move to this area, um, you know, the right way. Uh, one day, however, they're, well, while he's at work, there's like something wrong with the generator at their house and his wife and his children all are killed by this problem that's this generator problem that's in their house and it is incredibly incredibly tragic and um you know having a child of my own i don't know how he could ever i don't know how anyone could go through that it is it is just the most heart-wrenching thing in the world and you really feel his emotion you feel his pain as he's going through this but even harder is that he approaches his father and he tells his father you know like this happened and i don't have the money to be able to take care of to take care of their funeral arrangements and you know i was hoping that you could help and his father basically says like this wasn't like your wife wasn't related to me through blood. Like, why should, why should I help you with th these finances? And like, even though these are his grandchildren, he's like, Nope, I'm not going to help you uh, with any of this um, at all. Like this is all on you. And even at some point it does seem like he says he's going to help uh, pay for these children's uh, burial. But then he, once they get to the point where he's buying the caskets for his kids, his dad says, Oh no, I'm not going to help you at all. Like this is all on you. Um, Later on in the movie, when uh, he's trying, when Mofi is trying to collect on like whatever life insurance or whatever money is due from um, from his family, his father also steps in, and for some reason, his father's allowed to uh, be the conservator of this to, to to take all this money. And his father says, "Oh, I'll give you twenty percent of uh, of everything that they were going to leave." And it's just absolutely crazy how money hungry and how. Um, about himself and uncaring his father is when it comes to the loss of Mofi's children. It's absolutely, it's heartbreaking. Now he'll get his revenge later at the end of the movie, uh, but it's just, it, it's so hard to watch this unfold. And then throughout the movie, Mofi, as he's working as this printing shop technician, uh, the equipment that he's working with is, is incredibly old. It's incredibly dangerous. It's constantly sparking. It's constantly um, like, short circuiting it is it is incredibly <laughs> old and he keeps telling the people he works for hey we need new machinery because this machinery is bad it's on its last leg it's going to break down um like at the end of the movie him and his uh, he he hired like someone to be as like apprentice to help under him to uh, to train to to do the work also and him and this guy are trying to to do this work 
and it ends up like short circuiting and it, it's all going bad and Murphy gets shocked and like I think all the emotion that he's feeling that's all the pain and all the anguish and everything that he's kind of bottling up inside because he doesn't really let out any of his feelings finally comes to a head and he just like destroys all this equipment that <laughs> that is um that's going haywire on him that he has been lobbying for months and to, to get fixed and it's never getting fixed and they keep telling him oh we ordered the parts they should be in soon but they, they never come in and he just like just starts wailing on this equipment and he ends up getting fired and losing his job and he at the like towards the end of his um of, of his part you see him calling his dad and assuming that he's trying to ask his dad for help um and then that's the end of his part for now. Now he'll be in the epilogue of the movie later. Uh, but that is basically uh, what his part boils down to, is that he tragically lost his family. He doesn't have enough money to even pay for their burials. And now he's trying to somehow come up with the money so that he could uh, move to Spain for a better life. Now it doesn't ever seem like this is gonna happen. Um, at first, at the beginning of the movie, Maybe he could come up with the money. Maybe it was something that he could do. But life is just throwing him all these terrible curveballs. And um, it's just kind of beating him down. And he's just getting to the point like almost. And well, I mean, it, this is a really tough comparison. But in the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, where um, the, the main character there, he keeps wanting to get out on his own and travel. And he can't because like things keep happening and um, he ends up having to stay in the town and, and work in the town because he's uh, just unable to get any upward momentum to get out of this place. Uh, much more tragic here. It's not that much of that fair of a comparison, uh, but similar in that Mophie just can't dig out of this hole that he's in. And there's really no prospects and there's no way for him to do this. His one trade that he knows and this one thing that he knows is being this technician and being this engineer and he was fired from his job because of um, this uh, tirade that he went on because he fought and fought to get this equipment repaired but he couldn't do it. So the second movie is about a hairdresser named Rosa. Now she's trying to get to Italy with her sister. Her sister is very young. like uh, I don't know, like 13, 14, maybe 15. I'm getting... A lot of my age is confused because a lot of these movies that I'm watching deal with like younger girls. <laughs> um, but there was like Sophie Jones and then there was Slalom and now there's this one and they're all around the same age. But um, in this movie, Rosa's sister is very young and she's also pregnant. Uh, now Rosa is trying to get to Italy and she's having the same type of money issues where she's having a hard time coming up with the money that she needs to come up with. Now there's this girl who is going to get who is going to get her paperwork together and going to get everything that she needs together and help her and her sister get to Italy. Um, but we don't know this yet, but Rosa offers her something that is very terrible <laughs> that we will see later on. It's It's a uh, it, it's uh, it really shows you how much Rosa wanted to get out uh, and what she was willing to sacrifice to get out of Nigeria because it's it's just unbelievable what she offers this woman. So there's this handyman who also is like the apartment who runs the apartment that or that she lives in and she's constantly calling on him to help get things fixed and to help. Um, help get things done around the place. I think he owns the apartment or maybe he's just a friend of hers. It's hard to really tell here. <laughs> maybe he just might be a friend that she calls on, but he wants to be more than friends. And he thinks that if he is constantly fixing stuff and she's constantly asking him for favors, that that means that he should be friends with benefits and that he should get stuff from her. And also, he also thinks that this means that there is some type of relationship where she cannot date or talk to anyone else. Now she is not under that same impression. She just thinks that this is someone who's helping out of like the goodness of her heart because she uh, has a young sister who's pregnant, she's on her own, and she's trying to navigate this world while financially taking care of her sister and like being the only one who takes care of her sister. So it seems like she thinks that the, that he's just helping her because of the situation that she's in. Now, later on at her job, where she, I think she's like a bartender, she mixes drinks or something, she'll meet a guy from the United States. He's a white guy who has a lot of money. He's pretty well off. And... Um, he ends up taking a liking to her, he ends up getting her phone number, and Rosa and him end up start starting to date. Now she um, starts 
asking him for money and starts asking to like sort of rely on him financially a little bit where she asks him for a cell phone and she ends up giving it to her sister and she no longer is going to this other guy uh, because she doesn't have to because now she's like in a relationship with someone she actually wants to be in and she doesn't have to rely on this guy who she doesn't like <laughs> that she is uh, constantly getting help from. Now, the other guy, the, the, the guy who's helping her for friends with benefits, he realizes, he figures out what's going on, and he basically cuts her off. And he says, look, you're making me look like a fool out there, like you're making me <laughs> look like I'm doing all this stuff and I'm just chasing you and getting nothing for it. So, like, if you're going to be in a relationship with this guy, don't call me anymore, don't talk to me. I'm not doing this for free. I'm doing this because I want <laughs> I want a little something from you if you know what, you're, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, now... The, the American, his friends are all telling him, hey, like, if this girl is asking you for money, eventually she's going to start asking you to pay her rent, and she's going to start using you, and she's only using you for money. So if that starts happening, you should probably start thinking about not being in a relationship with her. Now, I honestly couldn't tell if Rosa was in this because of she really wanted to be in a relationship because she liked this guy or because she wanted the money because she is planning on trying to move to Italy. So if she's trying to move to Italy, then clearly she probably doesn't see a long-term relationship with this guy that she's with because he doesn't even know that she's planning to move to Italy or that she's trying to get papers to go to Italy. So it does seem like maybe she's using him for money um, and she's using him because she's in a really tough position um, where she's put in this... Uh, She's just like Mofi, she's kind of put in this position in life that she has no control of where her sister is pregnant, her sister relies on her completely, her sister has no money, and she and Rosa really has no job prospects outside of being a hairdresser. So it's like, what is she supposed to do? How is she supposed to have any upward mobility in life? There is no upward mobi mobility in life. There's no, um, there's no improving yourself. There's no getting better. There's no moving forward there's no upper echelon here it's just like you are where you are and you have to survive and you have to make things work and you have to figure it out um so eventually she does once the um the friends with benefits guy cuts her off he was helping her kind of with rent and um she does ask the american if he can like Bar if she can borrow some money for her rent and he of course is like very uh his whole demeanor changes at this point he tells her yes but then he never contacts her again and when she tries to call him he just doesn't answer so uh she's in a very particular weird spot here now the woman who is getting her paperwork together to send her to italy she we later learn her motive that she is doing this because rosa promised her her dot her sister's child so in order for them to get to italy once that baby is born she has to be given up to this woman now the sister didn't know this and when she's told this she clearly is shook by this she clearly um is traumatized by this she wanted this child like this is her child and she did not um under, she was not told, she did not understand that this was going to be a thing, and uh, she doesn't want this, but what, what choice does she have? Um, her sister pays all of her bills, her sister is her, um, is the only person she has in the world, um, so like, what is she supposed to do? She's supposed to say no and, and maybe lose the love and support of her sister and lose everything that she has, so she agrees to it, and uh, eventually the stress and the pain and everything, she ends up losing the baby, and she has a miscarriage, and the woman um, who is financing all this says, look, this is a tough spot you put me in, because I thought I was going to have a child, I thought you were going to give me this girl, or this baby, it ends up being a girl, but it was supposed to be a girl, but I thought you were going to give me this baby, so what you'll have to do is you'll have to work off the uh the money that you owed me that i already spent and your sister will have to work it off too and then eventually you'll work off enough money to where you can still go to italy so um but i think that it seems like the kind of work they have to do is like uh prostitution or at least that's the uh kind of feeling that i got from this was that her and her sister would have to be thrown into prostitution um, her sister being at such a young age is just, I mean, crazy. <laughs> uh, but that goes to show that, like, um, this is a, a dog eat dog world, I guess, in Nigeria, where you have to be in it for yourself and you have to worry about yourself and 
screw everyone else apparently. So um, instead of doing that, Rosa goes up to the guy, the friends with benefits guy and agrees to marry him and says, as long as you take care of my family and you, um, you know, uh, I'll marry you, I'll have your children, I'll do whatever you want, you just have to agree to financially support us. And he agrees to that, and that's basically her story. She's not in the epilogue for some reason, that's just where it ends. Um, very sad, very tragic that that is the kind of, because uh, obviously she didn't want to marry him, that's not what she wanted in life. She wanted someone her own age, she wanted to go to Italy, she wanted to be her own person, she didn't want to have to, from what I can tell, her main goal was not to have to live off someone her entire life. Um, but that's just me guessing, because, um, like I said, I do think that she was using people, um, I mean, because she had to for survival reasons, not necessarily because she wanted to, but because she had to survive. Um, so then in the epilogue, we're back to Mofe, Mofi, who now has his own business, and he's uh, doing very well, um, and he, his... Um, person his person that he hired to be like his underling at his other job now works for him also uh and they have their own like uh like printing shop technician thing going on um and at the end of the movie his mom comes up to him and his mom says look all this money that you and i your dad and i had is gone we blew through it we spent it your dad's not very good with money He's not a very good business person, and now we're completely broke. And she basically comes up to him and asks him for help, like financially. And the biggest part of me, even though he's family, um, he wasn't. He didn't act like family. And I was really hoping that Mofi would tell her no, and he did. He said, "Look, like my dad hasn't been a grandfather. I haven't seen him in years." Uh, I came to him for help and he wouldn't offer it to me. So like, why should I care about him at all? Like, why should I <laughs> lend him any money? Why should I do anything for you guys? And uh, that's essentially how it ends. N neither him, I, as far as I can tell, he didn't make it to Spain. He's still in Nigeria. Um, Rosa didn't make it to Italy. Um, her story ended. Uh, but at least at the end of the movie, one of them had kind of a positive note. I wish something good would have happened with Rosa also, but her story I wasn't really as in, like I didn't really care as much about because it didn't seem like she was doing things for the right reason. Uh, she was obviously, like I said, doing things because she had to survive because she had to do it. But I felt like Mofe was more of like a product of his environment and more of someone that you could root for. Now I was rooting for Rosa's sister, um, but I felt like he was more of someone that you could root for and that you could hope would would make it in the world and um i think without the epilogue i really would have worried about what happened to him i really would have worried about where he went in life but I, i'm really glad that they ended it that way uh but i thought this movie was absolutely fantastic i really enjoyed it a lot slow pace like i said um second story the second half not as strong for me as the first but they're both gripping stories emotional stories riveting i would say riveting stories um that really give you the feels that really um I, you know i love a movie that draws emotion from me not all of them do it but this movie it really it made me feel bad for both of them um and it kind of introduces you to a new uh a culture a new pl i don't think i've ever seen a nigerian movie before i'm not sure if i've seen a movie in Ni uh, in nigeria ever i don't know where blood diamond was but um i don't think i've ever seen a movie fr from nigeria um so it's always nice seeing a movie from a different uh, perspective from a different part of the world to see how that part of the world uh, works and yeah I thought it was uh, very gripping I thought it was uh, very well done um, I would watch it again if if someone asked me to watch it I would watch it again in a heartbeat it's like two hours long and each and each each story has about an hour per story so it's very fair with uh, giving equal time to both stories but yeah I thought it was a really good movie I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten I hope you join me next time when I review a movie called Nowhere Special. Thank you. Have a great day.